fun. So I was setting up for this video, and since this video is my one year celebration, I decided I would add some decorations to it, such as this beautiful banner that says happy birthday to my channel, of course, and as well as you can see this beautiful, beautiful balloon filled with confetti, which is now all pooled at the bottom, but we're not going to talk about that because I'm not touching that more than I need to. I made three of those, and as you can see by this massacre here, two of them popped. One of them popped like two hours ago when I was originally setting up, and another one popped just now when I was trying to move the balloon from way up here where you can't see it to a little bit further down. So we're now gonna treat this as extra decoration because I am not cleaning that up. In any case, hello and welcome. My name is Masha Nuts, and today we are celebrating the birthday of my channel. My channel is one year old two weeks ago. <laughs> We're gonna ignore that. We're celebrating today and we're also celebrating my 50,000 subscriber mark, which I still cannot believe I hit. That is a big number. So today we're gonna talk about the history of my channel and we're also gonna take a look at some of my first YouTube videos. Now that I've sat down to film, I realized that making balloons with confetti was a completely ridiculous idea because the only balloon that I have left is now behind me in the frame. And I'm not gonna move it because if I move it, this happens. So as I said, my channel is one year old and its birthday is on the 18th of September. That is when I posted the fishbone chevron video. Now you might be saying, Masha, you posted a bunch of videos before that in like 2015 and you would be right. So that is something we're going to discuss today. So let's talk a little bit about the history of my channel and also we're going to go into watching some of my very cringy old videos. So stay tuned for that. So I learned to make bracelets when I was 11 in the year 2009, which is now over a decade ago. It makes me feel very old. <laughs> If you don't know, I am now 21 since it's 2019. I learned during the summer holidays from a friend who taught me how to make the basic candy stripe and I could only make forward knots. It took me a very long time to master the backward knot, but once I did, I started making the chevron and it sort of went from there. And I didn't know that patterns existed. I didn't realize that that was a thing until at one point, I don't remember how, but somehow I found out about the crisscross pattern. We would just make a simple cross on your bracelet. And I made that for a while. The first time I saw a bracelet be made with a pattern by pure coincidence was on a school camping trip. So my school used to do camping trips every year. In about late September, early October, we would go out as the entire school to the woods for a couple of days. We would sleep out in tents and we would do a bunch of different activities. And one of my teachers was sitting by the campfire and making a bracelet. And the thing is, this teacher, I think transferred or quit or whatever after this one year of me knowing her. So we never really had much of a relationship. I don't think she ever really taught me anything. So we barely knew each other, but boy, did she change my life. Because at that point I realized that you could make patterns and she taught me how to read them because she had a printout of a pattern and she was making a bracelet that was pinned to her jeans. And that blew my mind. I found out that there were patterns. During school, we had the sort of crafts lesson that we did. I'm, you might have that as well. We did arts and we did crafts as two separate lessons as like add-ons to the regular curriculum. And in the crafts lessons for one of the semesters, we were doing bracelets with that same teacher. She taught us all how to read bracelet patterns and our literal task was to make a bracelet. And now she printed out a bunch of cool new patterns and I didn't know where she got them and I was absolutely amazed. So I picked out some patterns that I liked and I went on to making these bracelets and I made so many. I think I made bracelets for literally everyone in the class because none of the boys wanted to do them. So I made them for everyone and I had a blast. And then she taught me that there were some bracelet sites. There were some websites that you can find online that have these patterns and I was blown away. I found these websites, I created accounts. They're always linked in the description, by the way, you can add me on those. And I just went on a spin. I added so many patterns. I started making all of these patterns. It was crazy. My mind was absolutely blown that there were so many things that you can do. There's also a tutorial section where people would teach you how to make very special bracelets that can be expressed in a pattern. And I found YouTube. There was a plethora of videos on YouTube. Granted, this was 2009, so the quality of them wasn't amazing. They were mostly videos that people filmed in one take off their webcam. 
And back in the day on YouTube, I think you could only do 10 minute videos, so they were also like crammed into those 10 minutes. Anyway, it was like a whole different experience at that time. But I found these people who were making tutorials, like one-off tutorials, and everything I know, I taught myself through YouTube videos, through tutorials, through text even, people on the forums, everyone online on these communities, there were so many people that were doing the same thing that I was doing and everybody was helping everyone. You could post and people would help you. And honestly, to this day, I urge you to do that. If you ever have a question or anything, you could go onto these websites, you can go onto the forums, onto the chats, find other people and ask questions. There are always people who want to help out. In 2010, over the summer, pretty much exactly a year after I started making these bracelets, I started filming videos about them and they are very cringy. <laughs> Let me see if I can get it up on my phone. So to preface, this video was filmed in 2010. One year after I learned how to make bracelets, I was 12 years old. At this point I was in Miami because I have some family there and I was visiting them over the summer holidays. And I was filming this video in one take because I had no idea how to edit videos. I had no idea how to film videos properly either. So I was filming on my aunt's MacBook on the tiny little webcam that was on that MacBook. And I was literally filming it all in one go in one take. Now this is probably like the seventh take to be completely honest because I would, I remember starting to film the video and then messing up on some words and I had to stop. But this is one take. I would take the MacBook, I would do the intro and then I would turn the MacBook around, tilt it a little bit so you could see the pillow with the bracelet and I would film. So that's how I filmed this video. So enjoy 12 year old me. Hi, my name is Maria. This is my very first YouTube video. My nickname is... I'm already cringing. I'm so tiny. I feel like my face hasn't changed that much, but this is just like a miniature version of me and the voice. My god, the voice. I want to show you how to make a friendship bracelet. This will be a tutorial for very beginners, so I'll be showing you everything very, like, from the beginning. I remember specifically saying very like from the beginning and then thinking that that is such a dumb thing to say that I wanted to stop the video and try again. But as I said, this was like the seventh take so I could not be bothered so I just left that in. <laughs> That's just such a weird phrase to say. I am gonna do my best to make sure you understand and if anything goes wrong then I'm really really sorry but I'm new to this site. <laughs> You can hear my baby cousin screaming in the background, who is now nine years old. Yeah, she's nine years old now, wow, time flies. But yeah, I did try to make it as understandable as possible, and I still try to make it as understandable as possible. So that hasn't changed. So, yes. There you go, I swiveled the camera. This is my cushion, my pillow. And the thread will be about two meters, or which is about 80 inches. I have cut this and I fold it in half and make sure that the ends connect, like fold it out. Maybe I'll tighten it a bit, but yes. Now I take this one, put it over that one, put my fingers in and pull it out. That is not how I make the basic knot anymore. So whenever I'm making like a basic loop, uh, where would I just make a knot? That's not how I do it. If you want to see how I do it now, I do have a basic knot tutorial where I go into very, very detailed explanation of how I make the knot. But the knot that I do now is a little bit different, so it's interesting to see that. I actually completely forgot that that's how I used to do them. The colours have to be together. The two threads of each colour, they have to be together. Whenever I used to make candy stripes or chevrons or whatever, I would always double my colours. I mean, I did that because of the loop, but I also like that because when you double your colours, the sort of stripes tend to be thicker. So I used to do that. This one is on the left. We work with this one. We do another knot, just like that one. We put this like that. Put our fingers in. I love how the knot isn't even in the frame. <laughs> you can see that I'm a pro at filming videos at that point, where the knot is literally not even in the frame. All right, I think we've had enough of that video. That was filmed nine years ago. That is crazy to me. But yeah, that video got 1.5 thousand views. And then I filmed another video shortly after that, which was the Chevron tutorial. Let's have a look at that. Hi, my name is Maria, and today I will be showing you how to make a V-shaped friendship bracelet. 
bracelet. <laughs> I don't know why, but that just sounds so cringy. <laughs> you're probably watching this and you're not really thinking that much of it, but I feel like when you watch yourself, it's like a whole different weird and cringy situation and I feel so uncomfortable, but you guys asked me to do this. <laughs> I'm also reading the comments and someone said that I love your accent, you sound like Emma Watson. <laughs> Thanks. I used four threads, which unfolded will be about two meters, which is precisely 80 inches. I said precisely, it's not precisely. That's also one of the words that I said when I was filming the video, I said precisely and then I was like, I instantly knew that that was the wrong word to use and I wanted to stop the video and start filming again, but like this again was like, 10th take, so I was just like, whatever. Okay, now I put the blue to the left, and I put the other blue to the right. This is like the original Masha Knotts chevron tutorial. It's kind of funny. I wonder if anybody who's seen that video back in the day is watching now. I'm assuming no, because probably none of those people make braces anymore. But if you happen to be one of the um, 26,000 people who saw that video, do let me know, because that would be very weird. Now I'm gonna make a right hand knot. Oh yeah, I also didn't know that they were called forward knots. I sort of made up the names for myself. And I called this the right hand knot because I made it with my right hand. And then I found out that there were actual names for them as in forward knot, backward knot, and so on. And I found that out because someone was making fun of me for calling it the other thing. Which is mean, don't do that to a 12 year old. I felt really bad. What can you do? At least I learned. I call them right hand knots because I do the actual knot with my right hand. Also, turns out not everyone switches hands when they do forward knots and backward knots. So I always do my forward knots with my right hand and my backward knots with my left hand. But not everyone does that. Some people just make knots with the same hand and that blew my mind because how do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> I have to switch my hands. I've been wanting to get access to that account, but ever since Google bought YouTube, the way you used to log into YouTube is you had your username and your password. Then Google bought YouTube and now you log into your YouTube account through your Google account. And when they did that switch, you can't log into your YouTube accounts now, even if you remember the login and the password, which I do. So I now don't have access to that account, even though I do remember the login and the password, which is what I used to log in in the first place. If anybody knows how to get around that, please let me know, because I do remember the login and I do remember the password, but I don't have access to my account. It's been so many years since Google bought YouTube, I don't even know if there is a way anymore. Alright, I think that's enough of that channel, but that was the first channel that I ever created. And then after that, I don't think I ever posted any more videos on that channel, but I did create more in Russian. So let's check that out. So this was eight years ago, so this was 2011. So I did three videos in Russian, one of which I did teaching people how to read patterns. So let's take a look at that. This is in Russian, but I still feel like I can comment on this. Всем привет, с вами Маша. Я вас научу читать схемы Фенчик. Фенки вообще бывают очень разные. That's so cringy. My voice completely changed because I went through puberty and I'm now 13 year old and my voice is much deeper. And I think I was sick in that video as well. And oh my God. Okay, you can see that I'm filming with sort of like a webcam that you can hold in your hand. You can see on the left side of the screen, you have the YouTube video playback, so I can see what I'm doing. And then on the right side, you can see the actual pattern. I'm filming my computer screen because I don't know how to edit videos yet. The audio quality in this is also absolutely amazing because I'm using the audio off the webcam. It was one of those pin-on webcams and I pinned it to my shirt right here so I could move around and use both of my hands and that was terrible because the camera kept wobbling. Ну, изначально две. Потом вы их складываете. И получилось, что у меня их четыре. So you can see the YouTube video playback in the sort of laptop on the left. And you can also see that I printed out the pattern on the right. Две розовые и две коричневые. I don't have any words, so I think I'm just gonna like close this video and um, never come back to it. Believe it or not, that has 99,000, so nearly 100,000 views. And that has plenty of comments of people saying thank you and I learned so much. That's amazing, the fact that this could help someone 
that's great. I genuinely wonder if there are people still active in the community who have learned from my, my old videos in English or my old videos in Russian. Because based on the comments, those videos were pretty helpful at the time, but that was eight, nine years ago. I have no idea if those people are still active in the community. Moreover, I wonder if any of those people, if they are still active, watch my channel or know who I am because that would be crazy. And that would be so cool, but I genuinely don't think that's the case. So after that, I did two videos in English. I did three videos in Russian on two separate channels. After that, I stopped and then I did, I used to have a Tamagotchi, so I did a bunch of videos based on my Tamagotchi, but I got really bullied for that, so I deleted those. I know, why would you bully like a 13 year old kid who's making videos about a Tamagotchi? I don't know either, but people did. So I deleted all of those and now I don't have those. But that also happened, just for your information. I forgot how many channels I used to have. For some reason, ever since like 2009, 2010, not that long after YouTube really became a thing, I was dead set on being a YouTuber. And I don't know why, I have <laughs> no idea. Do not ask me why, but I really wanted to do that. And um, I created a lot of channels. Um, some of which I don't even remember, like this one, I completely forgot existed, but I just randomly stumbled across. It means that you can find it too. Hmm, this is not a challenge, I'm just saying. Please don't. But basically, one of these channels was based around me as a personality, and I liked to pretend um, as what? How old was I? 13. Lovely age to exist. I feel like the most cringy stuff happens between like 13 and 16. <laughs> Sorry if any of you are that age, but just trust me, you are gonna cringe in a couple of years. It's gonna be great. You're gonna love it. But yeah, basically I was 13 and I had this YouTube channel and I like to pretend that I was a famous YouTuber that has millions of followers and that everybody was interested about what was going on in my life. And um, basically I did vlogs and I pretended like I was very popular when in reality this video has 47 views and even that I'm surprised it has. Yeah, let's watch and cringe together. Hi everyone. Yeah, uh, didn't upload anything yesterday as I said in my cat video. We are not watching the cat video. And also I like to pretend that I uploaded every, I don't know, however, like once a day or something and I like to pretend that if I didn't upload people were worried where I had been, which is actually the case now. That's bizarre to me, but now if I miss an upload people actually ask me, I'm like, wow, you noticed. <laughs> That's pretty cool. But like back in the day, I legit used to pretend that like people were really worried that I hadn't uploaded for one day. Because I didn't have time, I'm on holiday and I couldn't be bothered to kind of upload anything. That's a great excuse. <laughs> Do you know what the reason why I'm wearing sunglasses is? Don't know how many of you know him, but back in the day, he was super popular. I think he still does videos on YouTube, but Mystery Guitar Man, he would do uh, videos and he would always wear sunglasses to sort of keep the mystery going. He would never show his face. He was always in his sunglasses. And I thought that that was a cool idea. And if I wore sunglasses in all of my videos, nobody would ever know who I was. So I always wore sunglasses in these videos. And I say always, there's like two of them. <laughs> and then I didn't make videos for a very long time. I stopped making videos after that. And a couple of months later, after I stopped posting videos, I launched my own VK group. And if you don't know, VK.com is like sort of a Russian Facebook, which I am also Russian if you didn't know. And a lot of people in the bracelet community who are Russian have their own groups on VK on which they share uh, like different bracelets, they share patterns, they share pictures and inspiration and so much more. And it's a pretty active community. There's a lot of people that are there. And so I had my own group dedicated to friendship bracelets for quite a long time. And I think at one point it reached like 14,000 followers, which is a huge number for a friendship bracelet group on VK. I still to this day have access to that, but that group has since died and it now only has um, 1.4K. So literally 10 times the amount of people, but not the point. I, that used to be really, really fun. I remember running that for a very long time. So I feel like I always wanted to be sort of on social media and run a blog, run a YouTube channel and whatever. And I don't know why, I don't know how that happened. I don't know what triggered that desire to share things on the internet, but 
that was always there. So it's crazy to me that I am now in a position where I am running something successfully and people are enjoying it and it's great. I mean, I'll get to that whole sappy part of the video a little bit later, but still, that is genuinely amazing to me. So after that, I joined Bracelet Book. Um, I don't remember specifically when that was. I think that was like 2011 as well uh, that I joined Bracelet Book. And I was a pretty active uh, member of that community as well. I remember being in the chat. There also used to be a chat counter so that it would also always show how many messages in the chat you had. And I remember having hundreds because I would always be in the chat and I would always be in the forums trying to help people out. So I was a pretty active member of that community. I submitted a bunch of my own patterns, which you can still view on my bracelet book account if you find it linked in the description. Um, they were pretty cringy, but I tried. <laughs> And uh, at one point they ran a promotion where they were giving away a bunch of thread uh, to the people who got the most clicks on their website link because they gave out individual website links to people. Um, and I won that and I remember getting the second place I think and I tried so hard, I tried to get everyone to click my link, I shared it with as many people as I could and a lot of people clicked and I got second place and I got that pack of threads from Bracelet Book. And I remember being just so happy because that was so amazing to me because I didn't have a lot of thread and I and I also felt amazing to be recognized by the website that I was on for so long so it was just an amazing experience. So yeah that went on for a while and um, at some point I stopped and I was making bracelets pretty consistently throughout this entire period and if you want to see my earlier bracelets you should watch my very first bracelet collection video that I did. I'll leave that in the card and in the description if you want to check that out but that one really shows all of my older bracelets and I talk a lot about them as well there. Um, but I made a lot of bracelets over the years and then in 2015 I decided that I want to restart my channel and I want to do this whole YouTube thing again. And for some reason, this time I decided I would do my videos in Russian because at that point there were already quite a few bracelet tutorials in English. There still are, you can find them. And I felt like the Russian speaking side of YouTube wasn't that saturated at that time. There weren't that many people who were making videos about bracelets in Russian. So I thought I would go ahead and do that. And so I filmed a couple of videos in Russian and this time I actually edited them because I learned how to do that finally. I first edited my videos in iMovie. So if you look at my channel page, you would see that I joined on the 12th of January 2015. That was when I started doing these videos. These videos in Russian that I'm talking about were on this channel, they were on Martial Knots. I started doing videos in Russian first. So yeah, I released seven videos in Russian and I had a schedule where I released them every week. So once a week I would go releasing a video. And then one week, I didn't, because I didn't have time to film it that week. And so I didn't, I missed an upload. And for some reason I was so perfectionist that that messed with my brain and because I missed one upload, I just dropped the entire channel and I stopped making videos. But also, I did that for a while. It didn't really lead me anywhere. Nobody was really that interested. The videos now have quite a lot of views, but, but that happened over time. At the time, nobody was really that interested. I wasn't getting any comments. Nobody was interacting with me. And um, I sort of, yeah, I dropped it because of that as well, I think, partially. So that happened. And then for some reason, like, I guess exams happened and graduating from high school and whatnot and I got completely unmotivated. And for three years, I stopped making bracelets at all. I didn't make any bracelets. And then at one point when I was already in London, this was just over a year ago, I started thinking again. I was like, I used to love making YouTube videos. I used to love running my group on Contacta, which I, on VK, which I don't run anymore and I didn't at that time. Why did I stop? Because I used to love this. This used to bring me so much happiness. Why did I stop? And so one day I just sat down and I decided I'm gonna start it again for no reason. And then in that same day, I sat down, I decided on a topic that I would film on. I filmed that video and I edited it and I posted it on the same day. And that was the 18th of September, 2018. So just over a year ago. So after that, I posted a video every month for the first two months or three months because I didn't have that much time and I was trying to space out. And then I started posting every week and then I started posting twice a week and my channel really took off. That first video that I posted was the Fishbone Chevron video and a lot of people love that. That video to this day is my second most viewed video. It has, oh, I don't know how many, how many does it have? 
325,000 views, which is a giant number for me. That's a lot of views. And people loved it, which I was not expecting because the all the other times that I've tried filming YouTube videos, not a lot of people watched it and not a lot of people subscribed and not that many people were interested. So I was genuinely not expecting it to go anywhere. I still wanted to do it just for me, but I wasn't expecting it to go anywhere. My entire goal going into making these YouTube videos was to try and find at least some people that were interested in the same things that I was. I just wanted to find sort of internet friends and people who would comment and people who would talk to me and somebody that I could talk to because nobody in my real life is interested in bracelets. Nobody wanted to talk to me about that stuff. And I can say I definitely achieved that one goal that I set out for myself. And I'm blown away. I'm genuinely blown away by the amazing response that I've had to my videos. Um, my channel went on a pretty slow growth at the beginning. I climbed to a thousand followers in a couple of months. It took me a couple of months to get to a thousand and then it doubled within the next month. And then I was at 4,000 by May when I started in September. So how many months? Eight months. It took me eight months to get to 4,000. But then once I got to 4,000, really started to take off because I was suddenly at five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I went from four to 10,000 within a week. I did my face reveal. Uh, I hadn't shown my face anywhere on my channel before. I decided I was gonna do a face reveal because at this point I had a lot of people who were interested in what I was doing and a lot of people that I was talking to and I felt like this would let us connect on a more personal level. And I'm so glad I did. I was very nervous, that was nerve-wracking and if you want to see that video that will also be linked in the card and in the description that was so nerve-wracking to film but i'm so glad i did it because showing my face and having my face on my youtube channel opened up so many more opportunities for me and now i can film so many different videos that i wouldn't have been able to film had i not done that but that was such a cornerstone such a pivoting point for my channel and that was so nerve-wracking and when i hit 10,000, i launched a competition to celebrate that and by the end of that competition, I was at 20,000. And then before I knew it, next month I was at 30. At 40, and I'm now at 50,000 subscribers, which is mind blowing to me because I never expected that to happen. And it's still growing, to which I am eternally grateful. And I'm so happy. I am genuinely so happy. At one point, I was terrified of growing as a channel because that meant that more people were watching, which is great. But it also meant that my channel was becoming less personal and I couldn't respond to all of the comments, I couldn't connect with everybody. Which still makes me sad because I used to be able to respond to every single message, to every single comment. But I now realise that it's not that bad because the more people we have here, the bigger the community, the more of you guys can interact with one another, the more interesting things we can do as a group, the more opportunities I get. I now get companies who are willing to work with me. Bracelet Book, a website that I was a member of since I was 13, probably even younger to be honest, is now working with me. We're now collaborating on different videos. That's amazing to me. We now, as a channel sort of community, have so much more opportunities and stuff and cool stuff that we can do together. I did a second competition and uh, I'm not gonna say, but I'm planning a bunch of really, really cool stuff that I never would have been able to do before. I now have people who send me mail, which is something I never expected to happen, but I get mail. People send me stuff. People send me their bracelets and I can respond to you guys in letter form as well. You guys know I love writing letters, so having people to write to is great. So I'm just really happy that one goal that I had when I started this whole thing with YouTube was that I found a community and I'm so glad that I did. You guys message me all the time saying how happy you are that you found my channel and I can't even describe to you how happy I am that you did. Ha and having you guys messaging and commenting and even if you're just a silent watcher, having you guys here is amazing. It's great and it has changed my life and this year has been beautiful and I have done so many things. I'm, I've been the happiest I've been in a while and it's great. So thank you guys. Genuinely thank you. I'm so glad you're here and I have so much more planned for you. I hope you guys stick around. So to celebrate the birthday of my channel, let's light a candle, shall we? Now I don't have a cake because 
I didn't buy one, but I do have a cupcake and I thought it would be cute to add a little candle to that. I'll just be adding one candle since my baby, my channel, because when I posted about this to Instagram, people actually thought I was talking about a baby. Do I have a baby? But my baby is turning one today, two weeks ago. We're celebrating my baby turning one. So I'm just gonna add one candle. I don't really have anything to wish for because anything I could have wished for with my channel has come true and has overwhelmed me by how amazing it has been. So I'm just gonna wish for another great year with you guys. Happy birthday. I'm not gonna eat this right now because lipstick, but oh my God, it smells amazing. So as I said, thank you guys. This year has been a wild ride. It has been amazing. I have made so many new friends. I also wanna give a special shout out to all of my patrons because you guys really do help me. As I did say, this entire ring light was bought off donations, but every month your donations go into supporting the channel, whether it is buying threads or, or funding different mail stuff, because I send out a lot of mail to my followers, whether it is jump rings or stuff to add charms or crib ends. Everything that is donated to my Patreon goes right back into the channel. So thank you guys, genuinely. And thank you to everyone else. As I said, if you're a silent watcher, if you're someone who comments regularly, if you're someone who I message with, a community of people who are interested in what I'm doing is all that I wanted. And I'm so happy that I got that. I try to post videos on Wednesdays and Sundays. Recently, I've been a little bit off schedule because I've had an insane month, but hopefully I'll get back on track soon. So thank you guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.